Hello, my name is Tom Itzel, and I'm the CTO of the Insieme Business Unit and a Cisco Fellow. I'm here today to talk to you about some of the new ASIC technology that we're developing in the Nexus 9000 product line. This ASIC technology is designed for cloud scale applications, and in particular today, I want to talk about buffering. But before I get into the specifics of what we're doing in our ASICs to address buffering, I'd like to provi provide a little bit of a groundwork for what is needed in buffering and, and what needs to be addressed in terms of networking issues when it comes to buffering. The first thing is long-lived TCP connections. And this requires a certain amount of large buffering in order to handle the, uh, the window congestion control mechanism of TCP. The second thing to consider is in-cast and how that interacts with the long-lived TCP sessions. What happens in a long-lived TCP session is that there is a window size that increases over a period of time. And what has happened as the in window size increases is the uh, TCP source sends more and more data. So you can think of window size as being equal to bandwidth. It increases the bandwidth up to a point where a packet is dropped, congestion, and that drop of a packet is how congestion is signaled back to the source and it will drop the window size to half of what it was before. So this is about the one half point. And then it'll keep increasing again until a packet gets dropped and then it comes down, increase and drop. And these points where the packet gets dropped is due to a buffer being overflowed. It's due to a detection of congestion. So what happens in that scenario if we think about a, 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 a buffer and data coming into this buffer is it begins to fill up until we reach some threshold in the buffer. And that threshold is typically set through configuration. It's, it would be the weighted red thresholds or, or the AFD thresholds, which I will talk about a, a little bit later. Or it could just be a simple threshold that says whenever you exceed this threshold, a packet gets dropped. And the, where you set this threshold basically determines the amount of buffer that you have or the amount of data that you have that is there to prevent the link from going empty, prevent the link from going idle. As data drains out, we're keeping the link, which is going in this direction, we're keeping it busy. If we were to run out of data, that's when the link goes idle. And when the TCP window shrinks to half of what it was before, the sender stops sending data for a period of time to bring the effective bandwidth down until it then increases again over time. And so the source of data going into this buffer will stop and you want to make sure that you don't drain to the point of being empty and thus cause the link to go idle because that would be a loss of bandwidth. And so you want to have a buffer that's big enough. Well, how big is big enough? It's something called the delay bandwidth product and that's the amount of buffering that you need. Well, what do we need in terms of delay bandwidth product in a modern data center? Well, let's be generous and say that there's actually quite a lot of latency in this data center, say 100 microseconds of latency. And if our bandwidth is 10 gigabits per second, it gives us a buffer of 125 kilobytes. That means that you should have that amount of buffering at that port to prevent the link from going idle so that you can run the, the network at its full utilization. The typical buffering that we have in the uh, Nexus 9K ASICs is on the order of anywhere from 5 to 20 megabytes on a per port basis or up as, as much as 40 megabytes in, in some cases. And so we have way more than enough buffer to address the delay bandwidth product. The other consideration that we have is in-cast. In-cast, or sometimes called um, microburst behavior, is when you have a lot of sources that are sending data to a particular output simultaneously. This happens in applications like uh, a uh, IP-based storage, where a particular data object might be spread across multiple nodes, and a single request will request from all of those nodes, and all of that data comes back at the same time. 
Another classic example would be something like search, where a single search query may go out to hundreds, possibly thousands of nodes. They all do this sort of localized search on the data that they have, and then they all come back with a fairly short response. And that response creates a sudden spike in the amount of bandwidth or amount of data that's going toward this buffer. And since it's happened so quickly, it really isn't subject to the congestion control. Any one of those sources, in fact, is not doing anything particularly remarkable. It's when you sum them all up simultaneously. It's sort of a flash crowd on this, uh, this uh, buffer. When that happens, the space above this drop threshold is what is used. And that's called the headroom. And this headroom is how much space do we have to absorb the incast? And so incast really isn't about how big your buffer is, but it's really about how much is left over, how much space remains to handle that sudden burst of traffic. Now, if we make our buffers really big, it doesn't help us with headroom because TCP is going to keep that buffer full. But if we make it really big, it does actually hurt the long-lived TCP connections. Going back again to the long-lived TCP connections, when I have a packet that comes in and it goes into this buffer, all of this data that's already sitting in the buffer or sitting in the queue must go out on the wire before this packet can go out on the wire. All of this stuff is in line ahead of this data. And so if there's a lot of data here, it takes a while for that to go through. I'll just pick some numbers to make it uh, easy to, to measure or easy to do the calculations. If I have 100 gigabits worth of data, when this packet comes on, if my link is 100 gigabit per second, it's going to take a full second for all of that data to go on the wire before this new packet can go on the wire. So it's the, the amount of data that you have divided by the bandwidth is going to tell you how long your latency will be for that single packet to go through. So I want to have my buffer be small so that I reduce the overall latency. It needs to be big enough so that I can sustain a long-lived TCP session without going empty. And I need headroom for the in-cast absorption. And we have to satisfy all of those requirements simultaneously.